<laughs> Why do you think that Jay Diggs killed Mac Dre? Mac, no, 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 no. We gonna clear that up. Okay. Jay Diggs didn't kill Mac Dre. Let's okay. be very clear. Like I can almost say for certain. But the benefit of Mac Dre passing at a time when Mac Dre wasn't cool with Jay Diggs. When Mac Dre was starting his own Thiz movement on his own, it was some disputes that was going on. Now, I can't say him and Jay Diggs had a specific dispute, but whatever pressure that, that whatever his team was pressure he they was putting on him, he wanted to have his own thing. So I can't say who killed who. I never. I'm sure you've watched the YouTube videos where they break it down, and it's supposedly this promoter in, uh, I forget what. No, I have heard who did it, and I have heard that they're gone, allegedly. Right. Now, I've heard that. You think the version that's out there publicly is basically correct, though? You know what? It's, it's multiple versions. Right. It's multiple versions. When I said what I said about Jay Diggs and Mac Dre, I say, bro, you a real snake because if you really love Mac Dre, why you didn't take care of his daughter? Why you ain't bring bus bread with his mama, even though she owned his masters? But what about all them albums you put out using Mac Dre face and name? The D is this and permit, you know, promoting this artist, this artist, that artist with Mac Dre face. Mac Dre presents. Mac Dre presents. Oh, I'm the president of this entertainment. But you wasn't president when Mac Dre was alive. So that was something that when I went to the crest side. And, and and the people seen me doing something with Jay Diggs, his people the one called me and start saying, man, why you f***ing with Diggs, bro? Why you f***ing with Diggs, bro? Like up here in the crest, like everybody can't talk about it, but boy, Diggs ain't right. Man, Diggs snaked uh, uh, Dre out, but it, they didn't say killed him. It's the fact of you take a man legacy and you use a man name and then you benefit financially in the public thinking you all this with Mac Dre face on your thing, you know what I mean? But you ain't never gave his daughter no money. You ain't never, like, his mom's straight, so let's take his mom out. How is you Mac Dre best friend and you ain't never bought his daughter a car, but you didn't made all these M's off of Dre name, the world is loving you because you connected with him, you know? So that is what me and his dispute started uh, because he really tried to play me though, like use me to come be part of his video. Mm -hmm. But when I get there, it backfired because his people that's at the video, like, bro, I gotta tell you something, but don't say nothing right here, bro. But it ain't right, bro. I want you to look at Mac Dre's daughter, bro, and look what she going through. And this is supposed to be his partner. Then I want to show you Mac Dre car, this brown cougar right here. Yeah, uh, Diggs left the car. At the shop, bro, owe oh, this man his money, don't want to pay for this engine. So they put me up on the back stories and other parts. Then somebody called me like, Jay, I used to be with Mac Dre every day. Let me give you the real rundown on the last couple weeks of his life, boy. Uh -huh. It ain't what they portraying. And when I got that info, that's what made me and him start having disputes. So every chance he get, he takes shots at me. But I'm like, boy, listen, listen. Listen, how is you best friends in Kansas City, a place where your best friend died, but this your this your spot? Nah, he I don't think he had nothing to do with 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 Dick. I mean with Drake getting killed. No, but he's like, let me get the benefit of it though. Yeah, let you me You don't get agree the with stuff he did after he passed? Nigga, if you ain't took care of his daughter, let's just start right there and leave it right there. But so what's his daughter's got like a serious issue with you, right? Did she, did she no, burn I a magazine mean, cover? She with burned her? a magazine cover because I came up there and I'm the one that told the world, hey, boy, how these niggas repping Mac Dre and they ain't never bought this girl a car, put her in an apartment, done nothing for her. When that happened, he tried to clean it up like, yeah, I'm finna do an interview and bring my niece out. But the family wasn't going for it. They're like, hell nah, you're not finna do no interview. I mean, he might one day. Hmm. But these things is what caused her because I think I think it hurt her too. Like I wasn't looking at it like I'm trying to hurt her. I'm saying, nah, he need to take care of you. He need to drop something on you mm -hmm. for what you going through. You know what I mean? You going through something out here, girl. You know, but it ain't my business on that level to force nobody. But since he throwing shots, I'm throwing shots back. But I'm just hitting them with facts. Hey, boy, you wasn't the president when he was alive. How you the president now? Mm-hmm. How Mac Dre loved this cougar right here. 
If that's my best friend, I'm not finna leave his car in no shop for two, three, four, five years over a $4,500 bill for an engine that I could have paid for and had Mac Dre car on display or had it at his, give it to his daughter or at his mama house or something. But there's no way that this thing is supposed to be sitting over here dusty up under this thing. And this man now talking about he want more money for it now. Damn. Yeah, nah. So, so, so Diggs, you know, for him, he loved taking shots at me. Right. He loved always taking shots. But today, buddy, you a real fraud, boy. <laughs> you ran off on Mac Dre family with that money, boy. And you always in Kansas City. Uh, oh, these are my best friends. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's what I think why people say he had something to do with it. But I definitely want to clear J. Diggs' name on anything got to do with murder of Mac Dre. Okay. But the benefit and finesse in the public, like me and Mac Dre were friends, and then using Mac Dre's name for the party and the uh, this compilations and all that, and his daughter ain't getting no monthly nothing. Man, that shit bogus as hell, man. Right. Ain't no way, man. She should be in a new car, and her rent should be paid yearly off all the Mac Dre presents mm. finesse packages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's standing on business. Yeah. Official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So after the whole thing with the game doesn't work out, uh, or whatever. Like, wh what's going on in your life? Like, at what point do you end up going to Atlanta? Um, I want to say 2000, 2006. Okay. 2005, me and Snoop hook up. We do this magazine called Mandatory Business. We make a film project called Mandatory Business. Uh, something about, you know, bringing the hood together, helping the mamas, the babies, you know, the networking. Like, something positive, basically. So the magazine spent off from the film that we made. By 2007, I started making films again, whole movies. I make a series called The Hidden Hand. Mm -hmm. And I do part one, part two, part three. From 2007, 2008, 2009. 2010 is when I moved to Atlanta. When I moved to Atlanta, my little brother Zay Tobin, um, one of the best producers in the world. Go. Imagine I taught him how to make beats. Really? Imagine that one of the top producers in the world, he knew how to play keyboard from church. Right. But I taught him how to do drum programming, MPC, how to plug up a, a MIDI keyboard and work MIDI, how to run Pro Tools, so how to mix it down. And what made you move to Atlanta, though? Zay Tobin was kept telling me, like, why is you in the Bay when the new money is in Atlanta? And how'd you know? Oh, because Zay Tobin's originally from he the originally, Bay. And you just knew him out there through music or what? No, I knew Zay Tobin by getting introduced to him. His family is uh, in the Army. His mom and dad or some, had something to do. So Zay Tobin was born in Germany. Right. But his high school years it was in Fillmore, Galileo. So the, the, the end of his time, 1999, is when I met Zay Tobin. And we recorded or, I, you know, teaching him how to work the the the, uh, the equipment because I seen he was a phenomenal keyboard player, but all you missing is how to do the drums right? and how to mix and how to put the, the different sounds. So once he learned that, his family moved in 2000 to Atlanta. In 2001, he sent me some product, um, and a guy named Gucci Man was on this first product. But I'm like, this is not it, Zay. Because I'm coming from California. <laughs> This new understand? thing you didn't did down south, you like, no, JT, they like 808s. And boom, boom, boom. And they like rapping that slower, not so much lyrical, miracle, blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. Slow. Hey, nigga, running down the street, get my money, get the, you know, the Gucci <laughs> man flow. Yeah, yeah. So he introduces me to this in 2001 saying, Jay, this finna be bigger than that shit out there. Uh-huh. And that was the beginning of me thinking about even going. 